upon us here at Alex Box Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The LSU Tigers trying to win another regional. If they can go 3-0, and Antoine DePlantis looking at history to become the all-time hit leader. Southern Miss coming off a historic comfort behind win, trying to take the air out of the balloon out of the host Tigers. Welcome to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Earlier today, Southern Miss made some history. They were down by eight runs in the middle of the game. They scored seven in the final two frames. Montenegro, one of his five hits, the walk-off, and Southern Miss staving off elimination, winning it by a score of 13 to 12. There was some drama in the game the night before featuring Southern Miss. In fact, Southern Miss was down four runs. That was before Matthew Guidry hits the grand slam to tie it at four, but LSU you would respond in the eighth. Saul Garza coming through in a big way up the middle. And then Chris Reed would follow as LSU would score four unanswered to win it by a final score of eight to four. And that is how we got to this point. Mike Morgan alongside the former LSU All-American Ben McDonald, LSU. Right now in the winner's bracket, Southern Miss again would have to win both tonight and an additional game tomorrow. If LSU wins tonight, this one is over. So long, goodbye. And with that, we say hello and welcome Mike Morgan alongside the former LSU All-American Ben McDonald. That was a lot we've had in the last couple of <laughs> nights, Ben. It's been a lot of fun to follow this regional. And what can you say about Southern Miss? They got a lot of momentum going into this one. Yeah, they really do. That's the way they finished their season. They didn't finish it really strong, but they went right through Conference USA to earn the automatic bid here. And who thought being down 10-2 to two, that they could come back a against Arizona State and score seven runs in the final two innings, but they did it, and here they are, but they got to beat LSU once tonight and again tomorrow if they want to advance in the Super Regional play. Yeah, kind of a good news, bad news for Southern Miss. The good news is obvious. The bad news is they're just about out of pitching. Josh Lewis is going to have to put together the best game of his career, and Eric Walker, he's been there before. Yeah, Josh Lewis, look, man, only one start on the season this year. He's only worked three innings as his max load this year in one game, but Eric Walker has been in the fire before. A freshman All-American two years ago he's been a weekend rotation guy for LSU do or die for Southern Miss LSU just needs one here at the box tonight we welcome you inside a rowdy Alex Box Stadium Skip Bertman Field here on the campus of LSU the Tigers and the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss about to do battle. Southern Miss coming off that dramatic comfort behind win led by head coach Scott Berry in his 10th year as the head coach, longtime assistant before that. He has guided Southern Miss to four consecutive regionals and trying to stay alive and play another day tomorrow. This lineup, we've been talking about Matt Walner all weekend long. When you hit 57 career home runs, you do get a lot of attention. But Gabe Montenegro and Matthew Guidry have been stars as well. Guidry, a pair of home runs. Montenegro, five hits in that last game. The come from behind win. He had the walk off to knock out Arizona State as we're down to the final two teams. And starting for LSU, a name familiar to Tiger fans, the six foot sophomore from Arlington, Texas, Eric Walker. Yeah, Eric Walker, you remember him as a freshman All American two years ago, hurt his elbow in the College World Series. Set out last year, redshirted back this year, back into the weekend rotation. Been a two-year weekend rotation guy, so he's been in the fire, and he continues to get better on the mound. Everybody comes back a little differently, a little different time frame from that Tommy John surgery, but Eric Walker is back and pitching in another big game in the postseason. Southern Miss had enough time to go back to the hotel, get some liquids, get some food. Same unis back here to the park. And ready to go again. Montenegro, the hero of the last game a couple of hours ago. The sophomore from Guatemala steps into the batter's box and fouls the first pitch away from Eric Walker. Montenegro told us between games he was going to find him some bananas. Good advice for all of us. Well, when Gabe Montenegro... Southern Miss played Arizona State earlier. The game time temperature was 95 degrees, a little bit humid. 
you got to think LSU obviously is a little bit fresher, but Southern Miss coming off an emotional win. If they can carry that and strike first in this ball game, I think they got a real shot. Swing and a miss, strike three. Up the ladder. Montenegro goes down. Now, if Eric Walker is on his game, he can do that to you. He'll elevate. You know, only the fastball is 87 to 89 miles an hour, but he'll move in and out, up and down, a really good changeup. Probably his best pitch, but he'll elevate in the top of the zone, and that's a big first out. I mentioned the fine regional Matthew Guidry has enjoyed thus far. Four hits in total, two home runs, and leading the team with eight runs batted in, including the grand slam last night off of LSU closer Zach Hess. That made it a 4-4 game. Southern Miss had all the momentum at that point. And about three, four hours ago, Gidry hit his second home run of the regional. It was a three-run blast. That was part of the seven-run barrage in the final two frames for Southern Miss to knock out Arizona State. That game will go down as one of the best in the history of Southern Miss baseball. Yeah, I tell you, that's the surprising thing. You knew about Arizona State leading the nation in home runs. They were here, but Southern Miss, six home runs in this region. That's by far more than any other team. So Southern Miss has broke out the power bat since arriving in Baton Rouge. They've been winning games with home runs and double plays. Well, they're averaging 10 and a half runs a game this thing. They're hitting 327 as a club. Now, the ERA in these three games, seven runs a game. Obviously not very good, but they're scoring enough runs to overcome that right now. They've turned seven double plays defensively. Offensively, they've tapped into the power supply here at the box. Full count now to Guidry. Skies one to left. Cabrera coming on and makes the catch for out number two. We've had 13 total home runs in this regional. Southern Miss has hit six. Everybody else has hit seven combined. Yeah, that wasn't expected because Southern Miss team coming in now. They can bang it a little bit. 66 home runs is what they have on the season. That's number one in Conference USA. and They did their thing. Third in batting average in Conference USA. Seventh in stolen bases. The big thing to watch out for with Southern Miss is the defense. They've turned some double plays, but a 963 fielding percentage during the season wasn't very good. Slater, one of three seniors in the starting lineup. We've seen as many as four for Southern Miss. When you think about that last game, all those seniors thinking of themselves down eight runs at one point, six runs late in the game. This might be the final time I ever put the cleats on. Well, something happened to them. If you go back and look, their last three Conference USA weekends, they did not win a weekend series. They really stumbled down the stretch. But they get to Conference USA in the very first game of the conference tournament. It was a come-from-behind victory. Not as much as what we saw just a couple hours ago, but similar to it, they got a lot of confidence, and they just rolled right on through Conference USA. I think we're all very curious how they're going to come out early in this game. What's the energy level like? What's the focus like? We might get a part of that answer here in the top of the first, and then we're going to get a lot of answers to questions for Josh Lewis in the bottom half. Well, I agree. I think the start of this game is so important for Southern Miss. Such an emotional high. If they can strike first and get some momentum and keep it, but at the end of the day, it's going to be about their left-handed pitcher, Josh Lewis. Can he go out early and really hang some zeros on this LSU offense? It's been really good. If he can do that and Southern Miss can score first, I think they can continue that momentum. 
Battle continues. 1-2 to Slater. That one goes up to the pitcher, and Walker is there. A toss to first for the out. No runs on the board. LSU is coming up. Bottom of the first about to unfold. A happy Paul Maneri in his 13th year with the LSU program. World Series champions in 2009. His 37th year overall as a collegiate head coach. And he's yucking it up with Antoine Duplantis, who will have a significant at bat here in the first with a chance to become the all-time hits leader in LSU history. He's tied for that mark now. He flirted with breaking it last night, but did not break it. But of course, he's not the only story. It is a lineup chock full of guys who have been productive of late. From the top to the bottom, Zach Watson continues to kill it in regional play. So he guards another guy. And how about on the first pitch? A goner. Ninth home run for Josh Smith. And Josh Lewis greeted rather rudely in just his second career start. Well, you talk about ambush, right? Josh Smith had a phenomenal year. Eight homers going into the game and looking for a first pitch heater. And boy, he gets one. Center cut. Watch this swing. You talk about find a barrel. And that was a no-doubter for straightaway right field. And that's exactly the start that LSU wanted. I'd say LSU is ready. That's one way to get it started. <laughs> a 1-2-3 inning for Walker. A one-pitch home run for Josh Smith. Shake it off, Josh Lewis. Yeah, if you're Josh Lewis, you just got to settle down. And if that's all you give up in the first inning, that's okay. But you got to get all your pitches going. He's a fastball, two different breaking balls, and a changeup. Only making his second start of the season. And you can see he is a biomedical science major. So obviously he's a smart kid. I don't even know what that is. Sounds but it smart. sounds complicated. Yeah. And there's a lot of syllables in that. Tapper to third. Lynch will guide it across for the first out. And now Antoine Duplantis who tied the record on Friday told us afterward he just wants to get this thing over with. He said the one person in his family who we really wanted to break the record for was his grandfather, who was a huge stats guy. The stats read like this for Antoine Duplantis. 352 career hits. That's tied with Eddie Furness for number one all time. Duplantis has played in 267 games in an LSU uniform. That's the most in program history. Three for the, nine this weekend. Broke the record, it says, by Jason Williams, who had the record. Looking games played. Line yeah. shot up the middle, base hit. Antoine Duplantis stands alone atop the all-time hits record at LSU. Well, there have been some great players to hit for LSU. That man right there, Dr. Eddie Furness, held the record for many years at 352. And Antoine Duplantis just picks up number 353. And only Jake Mangum of Mississippi State is ahead of Antoine Duplantis in SEC history for career base hits. Many of those 353 career hits look just like that one. Yeah, they do. I mean, this year's been a little bit different because he only had six career home runs going into the this year. And that's in three years. In his senior year, he's hit 11. So he's pulled the ball a little bit more this year for some power. But you're right. If you go back and look at all those 353 base hits, I promise there's been as many to left center field as there has to right center field. Cabrera stands in, one of five lefties against the South Paul Lewis. You know, Paul Maneri... You saw chatting away with Antoine Duplantis earlier. He said it best. He said Duplantis is the poster child for LSU baseball 
because he does everything the right way. There is nothing egotistical or brash about him. He is so workmanlike. Team first guy all the way. Bullet to first, step on the back for one, and another errant throw for Southern Miss. Now the throw to third. Every time Southern Miss throws a ball to a base, you hold your breath. That has been an issue both games today. Yeah, we touched on their defensive struggles. And really, they were pretty clean the first couple of games of this tournament. But last game, it kind of caught off with him. You can see Slater just took the ball, and it sailed out towards center field. And shortstop Cooper couldn't keep it in front. And Antoine Duplantis goes from first all the way to third with two out. And Southern Miss has won 40 games this year. In spite of the fact they're the worst fielding team in Conference USA. Those numbers don't ordinarily add up. Popped up. It'll be the first baseman Slater. So the error not costly. But the home run is. Josh Smith hits the bomb. And Antoine Duplantis, the record breaker, number 353. That man's got to feel awfully good about things. Antoine Duplantis, he can relax now. The record is behind him, much like Jake Mangum, who couldn't wait to get it over with when he broke the SEC record. Now Antoine Duplantis, he's second all-time in the SEC as he has the school record at LSU, 353 career hits for the senior. Now, speaking of history, how about the all-time home run leader for Southern Miss, Matt Walner, 57 career home runs and he tied the school record with 23 in a season with a home run in a game earlier today yeah a lot like Antoine Duplant is very consistent in a different way with the power numbers the national freshman of the year two years ago all-american first team last year and he's backed it up with another monster year this year Walner has hit two home runs in this regional. One a towering shot and one an absolute laser beam. And that's what Eric Walker will do to you. I mean, the fastball is not a great one. But look at Walner right here. He had a line drive home run today. And I'm not kidding you. It got out of the ballpark as fast as I've ever seen a ball get out of the ballpark. Like he hit it. And before he could finish his backswing, it was almost hit about six rows up in right field. Just a line drive. Right along the outside corner, Walner disagrees. Second punch out for Eric Walker. Well, he busted him in with a fastball to make him think he may get him on the inside part of the plate. And this is Eric Walker at his best right here. Bust you in off the plate and just paint the outside corner. I mean, you can't do it any better than that. Doug Williams calling balls and strikes today. Ryan Bowen, a junior from Shreveport at the plate. Not surprisingly, Bowen, the DH in this game, he was the catcher in that last game that lasted nearly four hours. And he'll get to just focus on his four or five at-bats tonight. Two up, two down for Eric Walker. He's retired the first five. Walker, the freshman All-American. Helped lead LSU to the College World Series finals two years ago. That's where the elbow issues started. In the air right center. Duplantis. Eric Walker has set down the first six he's seen. An eight-pitch second inning. Well, Southern Miss got to this game by virtue of a walk-off. LSU has had five walk-offs this year. That's a school record. Last night was not quite a walk-off, but it was still pretty dramatic late-inning explosion to win the game. 21 victories against the RPI Top 50. Roller coaster ride 
A couple of four-game losing streaks, one five-game losing streak, but now seeing them seeming to play their best baseball of the year. They are matched up, as we've told you, with the Athens Regional, and look at that. Florida State has knocked out Georgia at Foley Field. So Florida State is going to the Supers with Mike Barton, and guess what that means? If LSU wins tonight, the Seminoles are coming here, and LSU is staying at the friendly confines of Alex Fox Stadium. And who saw that coming? Florida State borderline might have been one of the top last five in the NCAA tournament. They go in there to Athens. Garza, Liner, Lynch, Spears it. And the biggest story of this entire NCAA tournament this year, I don't care who you pull for, it's hard not to like the skipper for the Florida State Seminoles, Mike Martin. His final season, going to retire after 40 years. In 40 years, he's won 40 games every season. He's been to 16 World Series. Hadn't won the whole enchilada, but he certainly would like another shot at it. And he's two wins away from doing just that. The only coach ever in Division One to go over 2,000 victories. And they kind of limped it in, too, and got in the tournament. And, and, and for the second straight year, the Georgia Bulldogs, the top eight national seed, doesn't get out of the regionals. A pop-up. Long run, Donaldson. Up to the task. Fine play by the backup catcher getting the start in this, the second game of the day for Southern Miss. Boy, would Josh Lewis love a 1 2 3 inning? Do a world of good for his confidence. Just 23 innings all year. For the left-hander, yeah. he's doing good. I mean, he—he. He I was really worried about that first inning. Never really been in this situation. One start to his name. Now he was a junior college kid that started a lot, so that's going to help him kind of navigate through this. But obviously, the biggest start of his career. And quickly ahead of the count, no balls, two strikes, and he really only made the one mistake to Josh Smith, right? But it's the first pitch of the game where yep. you don't quite know what you have. He wasn't trying to throw it down the middle. That's where it ended up, and Josh Smith was ready. But since then. Good changeup, good breaking ball, spot this fastball. Bounding ball up the middle, Gidry on the run. Gidry can't get him out of the glove. That's a tough play right there. Just a little hopper that gets right over the top of Lewis's head. Gidry comes in wide open. Who's going to be bang, bang? I don't know if he would have got him anyway, but they end up calling it a base hit, which it probably should have been. But right there, he caught it and the transfer from glove and the throw in hand. Southern Miss, 215th in the nation in fielding percentage. There's only 297 teams. And has plagued them all year long. And again, it's not just fielding percentage. It's that obviously tells you how many errors there are. But there's a lot of plays that it's almost as if they're playing with a bunch of guys out of position. Quite frankly, yeah. If you, if you talk to head coach Scott Barry, tell you he's never seen a team you know like this. And they make them in bunches, kind of like a team you hear hit home runs in the mm -hmm. bunches. They make errors in the bunches. But it's been weird that they've won that many games. You're right. I yeah. Mean, look, I mean, to win field like, like that, that, you got 40, and you go 20 and 10. In Conference USA, you finish in second place. It's a heck of a year. It's not the year they had a couple of years ago. In 2017, he won 50 games, which is the most ever won mm -hmm. in Southern Miss history. Still has a World Series ring from his days as an assistant when Southern Miss shocked everybody in 2009 by making their first and only College World Series. Not saying that that play should have been made by Gidry at all. It's, that would have been a tough play. It's called a hit for a reason. But if you're Josh Lewis, you need a couple of web gems tonight to help you out. Southern Miss needs to make perhaps some extraordinary plays because they're behind the eight ball in so many ways. And they just had a grueling game. Their pitching is spent. They're playing a red-hot LSU team in front of about 10,000 fans donning the purple and gold. Yeah. I mean, their relievers, I mean, I, I marked their relievers that pitched. Every one of their top five or six relievers have pitched at least two of the three games so far. So when you talk about what's available, 
and what you're going to get out of those guys in the bullpen. They're really hoping Josh Lewis can go five or six. And it's going to be a stretch for him because, again, he's been a reliever the entire season except for one start. The most he's ever worked this season is three innings and one outing. But stranger things have happened in postseason play. Hughes uncoils and lines it foul. Is that a beer tent down there, you said? That's called the yard. In the left field corner? Yeah, they got one in the left field corner. And they got one down the right field line, too, that you can't really see. You can barely see the top of it. And, yeah, that's where you, um, if the Tiger fans didn't have another reason to come to the ball game, now uh -huh. you can go and pay 15 or 20 bucks and get yourself a bracelet and go in there and you have a couple of adult beverages if you choose to. Now, you got to stay in the tent. Right. Payoff out away. Couldn't help but think of the latest news coming out of the SEC meetings in Destin. No longer against the rules for SEC schools to serve alcohol at sporting events. It'll be up to each of the 14 institutions on that. So they're going to do that for football? If, there's, if the schools want to, absolutely. That's going to present a real... I guess all the LSU fans won't have to sneak it in in their boots and stuff. <laughs> they can just buy it now. That'll save them, save them having to tote it in. You mean fans do that? I'm shocked. And now a walk to the nine-hole hitter. So you retire the first two, and then the ball that you know, hoped you could make the play. You got an infield single, now a walk, and now back to the top. And this is what Josh Smith did on the first pitch of the game. Well, Josh Smith is a young man at LSU, missed a ton last year. He was penciled in to be the sophomore shortstop last year, but back issues derailed his entire season. He only played a handful of games. And they missed his defense and his offense. That's his ninth home run of the year. He's hitting 340. 348 now. Locking it into the alley in left center field. That's going to drop, get down for extra bases. Two runs will score. Smith is heading for third. Here comes the throw. He's in there. Two run triple for the shortstop. Well, when it comes to postseason play, you want your dudes to show up. Well, as he's due to showing up so far in two at bats. How about a leadoff home run? Now I'm going to take one out to left center field. You see him round in second right here. He takes a look at it, grabs another gear, and he easily gets in to third base for a triple and two RBIs, and Josh Smith's halfway to the cycle. The pride of Greenwell Springs, Louisiana. He had a good SEC tournament, 9 for 25. He's enjoying a good regional thus far. He had only 16 at-bats last year due to that stress reaction in his vertebrae. And that's why recruiting class in the country, you get Josh Smith back healthy. Zach Watson returns from the draft. Antoine Duplantis returns from the draft. Zach Hess returns from the draft. So there was a lot of expectations for LSU, even more than what they normally have. In bad mood. Broussard in the other alley, and this will be caught. Diving grab. What a play by LeBlanc. Wow. That might be the best play we've seen so far in this regional. This is a glove for they've struggled on defense, but Superman this time. And that's an awesome catch, and that ends LSU. They would have certainly scored at least one more run, but Tigers up three to nothing. Mike Morgan, Ben McDonald, Paul Maneri joining us now from the LSU dugout. Coach Eric Walker off to a great start. What are you looking for out of the sophomore tonight? Yeah, Eric looks sharp. He's, he's hitting his spots, and uh, he's getting some swings and misses with his fastball, especially when it's up in the zone. Coach, who you got available to you in the bullpen if you got to go down that route today? Oh, we got, we got guys. Ben, we've got uh, um, Peterson's probably available. Of course, Beck hasn't pitched yet. Fontenot hasn't pitched yet. Hilliard threw an inning a couple days ago, so we, we got plenty in. Hassel begged for the ball in the ninth if we need him. Coach, thank you for the time. Okay, guys. Here's a changeup. Yeah. Just made the great defensive play way ahead of the changeup from Walker. And that's what Walker does, too. He can pitch behind, meaning he can throw something other than a fastball and a fastball count. And that changeup is his bread and butter.
Bottom third of the order up for Southern Miss. LeBlanc, Lynch, and Cooper. It's this part of the order that was pretty instrumental in the comeback in the ninth before the walk-off by Montenegro. LeBlanc with a little pop-up. And the catch is made by Hughes. It was LeBlanc in the ninth who got hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. Then this man, Danny Lynch, hit a sack fly RBI. Cooper struck out, and then Montenegro had a hit for the ages. Two runs single to walk it off for Southern Miss, and that's why they are here. And Arizona State is packing to go back to the left coast. I think most people, when they saw this bracket, probably overlooked Southern Miss. It just had a, I think fans had a natural gravitation toward two of the more historically great programs over the years, LSU, Arizona State. It was Arizona State who led the country in home runs. But Southern Miss is not a team to be counted out at all. And this is not their first rodeo. No, and they don't get the credit they deserve because they're in the, obviously in the state of Mississippi. And when you're in there with Ole Miss and Mississippi State, two big-time programs, but it's hard to overlook what Scott Perry's done over the years. We talked about this and said it a bunch, but when you think about it, in 10 years of coaching Conference USA, they've never finished worse than third place in Conference USA. 94 wins when you combine 2017 and 2018 together. They go 94 and 34. Scott Berry, a former two-time all-region catcher at Crowder College. Worked at some smaller schools around, including in Mississippi. Assistant coach at Southern Miss, where he worked with pitchers and in recruiting. And eventually got the head coaching job, replacing Corky Palmer. He still keeps up with Corky Palmer. The head coach who led them to Omaha in 09. They says they eat lunch every week. They're like brothers. One and two, the count. Uh, the freshman from Jupiter, Florida, Danny Lynch. His older brother Tim played for Southern Miss back in 2013 through 2016. Walker winds up another 1-2. Driven deep center field. Watson long run now slowing up and makes the catch. That one about 400 feet in distance but a noisy second out. Eric Walker, who looks like he's about 16, <laughs> who rarely hits 90 on the radar, but boy, he's a classic case of a guy who just knows how to pitch. Yeah, and he was that way when he stepped on campus two years ago. Former quarterback in high school out of Texas, around Arlington, Texas, put up some huge numbers as a quarterback, wanted to come to LSU and play baseball, and boy, he didn't skip a beat when he stepped on campus. Inserted right into the weekend rotation, which you don't normally see many freshmen do. Out of Arlington, Texas, three-year starting quarterback for an outstanding football team at the 6A level in Texas. That's Arlington Martin High School. Storm Cooper has had a regional to remember. The numbers at the bottom there contradict what they saw the whole season from Storm Cooper. Classic case of a guy getting hot at the right time. Well, we talk about it all the time. It's not what you did during the regular season. It's what you do to this point forward. And it's wonderful that you had a great year at this point. But if you haven't, but a guy like Storm Cooper who hadn't gotten many opportunities, he just inserted back into that lineup not too long ago. 
Hard hit ball, but easy play for Watson. Nine up, nine down for Walker. Scott Barry will join us when we return. Three nothing LSU. Mike Morgan, Ben McDonald, bottom of the third, about to get underway. Scott Barry joining us now from the Southern Miss dugout. Coach, we'll get to this game in a second, but I've got to ask you: down eight runs, down six runs in the final two innings, you come back and win it and walk it off to stay alive. Have you ever been involved in a game like that? You know, I'm sure I have over the years doing it, 35 years. But I'll tell you what, here late in my career, that was one of the most gratifying ones that I've been a part of. Special group of kids that never quit; they kept competing. Coach, how do you keep them charged up? Such an emotional win for you guys. It's been the heat, 95 degrees all day long. You, you come off an emotional high. How do you get them, get them jump-started again? Well, you know, Ben, I told them on the bus that, that people expect us to be tired, to come out here and, and just kind of lay down. But it's what we expect of ourselves. It's not what they expect of us. And, you know, hopefully it's, it's about competing and, and picking up where we left off. You know, we're down three runs right now. Uh, the guy's spotting it up pretty good. But, you know, we just got to do a good job here on this side of the ball to just keep it there, give us a chance late with our with our offense. Coach, we really appreciate the time. We'll let you get back to it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Duplantis skies one to center. Blah, blah. We'll put it away for the first out here in the home half of the third. Antoine Duplantis did not waste any time tonight. First at bat, base hit, all-time hits leader at LSU. And when you think of the amount of ridiculously good and talented hitters that have come through Baton Rouge, that is one heck of a distinction. You're going to be a very hard record to break, too. You, you can't just be good. You also have to be healthy. I mean, you've got to play a lot of games to really have a shot at a record like that. That's something that both Duplantis and Mangum of Mississippi State. Remember, Mangum had to play hurt his whole sophomore year. Yeah, Mangum actually broke broke part of his hand and played with a broken hand not to miss. And it still was productive. You know, mm -hmm. lost a little bit. But Jake Mangum, again, he stepped on campus too. Look, he won the bat title in the SEC right out of the shoot. And it's been kind of strange. You get two of the best hitters or two of the best hitters in the entire conference history step on each campus at the same time, you know, and to watch those two guys perform the last four years has really been a treat for everybody. And you're right, you got to stay healthy, but you also got to play four years. Got to play four years. To break a, year like the, a record like that. The three-year guys just won't get enough at bats to ever break a, a, a career record like Neither that. Neither will four-year guys that don't play in the postseason. And, and both those guys have been part of successful teams as well, so you get extra at bats in the postseason. Regionals, Super Regionals, Omaha, both Duplantis and Jake Mangum have had the opportunity to play in postseason each year. And a one out walk to Cabrera. You know, you've seen this LSU team a lot more than I have this year. And, and I know they had the injuries, a lot of things were up against them and so that the record is not LSU like and the fact that they had to fight just to host a regional by having a good showing in Hoover said a lot to me but when I put them under the microscope now not the product from a month ago but the product of what LSU is now I mean this to me is one of the most complete teams in college baseball there's not a lot of weaknesses here I don't just look for strengths when I look for teams that can go deep I look for teams, Ben, that have the fewest amount of weaknesses, and it's hard to find one for LSU. Well, I mean, and we've always said this, you know, there seems to be the teams that are peaking at the right time and playing the best towards the end of the teams that make the, the deep runs because the competition is so close now in college baseball. And, yeah, if you saw LSU early, for instance, when they went to the University of Texas and got swept early in the year, it looked like a, a bad ball club, to be honest, and had a lot of injuries during that time. And it just took them a while to find out who they were. And they've gotten healthy. And they've gotten some experience, and more importantly than anything, they've gotten some confidence as of late. And you're right. I mean, they had some big wins during the season. Look, they went into Mississippi State in Starkville, knocked off Mississippi State, top eight national seed, beat them two out of three. So they've had some big wins, and at times they showed that kind of team that we're seeing right now. But it just wasn't consistent. A lot of midweek losses that, quite frankly, they shouldn't have lost. But Saul Garza, the guy at the plate to me, has been the, the, the biggest guy lately. 
Drives one to right. Walner is there. Good inning overall for Josh Lewis. Through three. LSU on top, 3 nothing. Welcome to NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. The ESPN Network's bringing you every game on the road to Omaha on all the ESPN networks and whip around coverage as we speak on ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded Channel. Alongside former LSU All-American, longtime major leaguer Ben McDonald. I'm Mike Morgan. It's turned out to be a beautiful night here in Baton Rouge. Temperatures have dipped. Nightfall upon us. Another great crowd. That ball is hammered and long gone. Who is this kid? Gabe Montenegro with the walk-off in the last game. All five foot seven, a buck sixty of them. Just hammers one into the diamond deck. Well, what a nice move that was on a pitch right on the inside part of the plate. Eric Walker got a fastball by him in the first inning and struck him out, but not this time. Gabe Montenegro goes to the plate says, you will not get another fastball by me. And what a nice move that was. He pulled those hands in very tight to the body. Montenegro, they really took a flyer on this young man. Originally from Guatemala, made it to the States for a short time. The AD for Southern Miss was at USF and said, you got to get this kid. Scott Berry said, okay, well, I'll take a look at him. <laughs> what a player they have found. Yeah, you see that pitch? I mean, he's borderline strike on the inside part of the play, but he was not going to get beat on another fastball. Gidry lofting one, but playable. Duplantis makes the catch. Eric Walker had retired the first nine batters he saw. Montenegro, meanwhile, just today in the two games, six for eight. The walk-off in a five-hit game in game one. Six hits in one day, that'll make you smile a little bit. I mentioned on day one, he it just in a stature reminds me of a a left-handed Jose Altuve. He's about an inch taller than Jose, the perennial all-star for the Houston Astros. Slater, and a lot of fly balls, but the last two with not nearly enough distance. Duplantis again handles it. Already four putouts for Duplantis. Well, Walker is not a ground ball pitcher. You would think he would be because the velocity is not great, but he likes to take that four seam fastball and he'll ride it up in the zone and he gets a lot of fly balls. Because he lives on the corners. Yeah, and he, but he gives up some home runs from time to time. But what he normally doesn't do is beat himself. You won't see him walk a lot of guys. Well, here's a guy that can go launch mode at any time. Matt Walner. It's going to be a high draft pick in all likelihood tomorrow night. Yes, be a lot of dreams come true about 24 hours from now. His teammates call him Biggin. He's 6'5", 220 out of Forest Lake, Minnesota. Grew up a Twins fan. His favorite player was Justin Morneau. Maybe the Twins will fulfill his lifelong dream and draft him. Well, that would be a good move for him. I definitely think he's going to be a big leaguer, no doubt. Laced and smothered in the air. Great catch by Broussard. Home run by Montenegro. Sutter misses on the board. For more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. He's Ben McDonald. I'm Mike Morgan. Thank you so much for stopping by this Sunday evening. A lot of the 
Super Regional starting to size up. LSU hoping to punch its ticket with a victory tonight. Southern Miss would need a win tonight and tomorrow to pull off the stunning upset as the number three seed. Beloso, Reed, and Hughes up here in the home half of the fourth. Beloso 0 for 1. LSU, by the way, this is their eighth consecutive regional final that's tied with Louisville for the longest active streak. LSU has hosted 26 regionals, and they have won 21 out of the first 25. This format started in 1999 with the Super Regionals. And since we've gone to that, LSU has been a regular player in the postseason and winning in regional play. They hardly ever lose these regionals at home and they pop up to the shortstop. Yeah, LSU wins regionals, what, at 84%? They have 25 of them. They've won 21 so far. One win away from winning another one. Now, Josh Lewis... We didn't know what to expect. He's already into the fourth inning. He couldn't have started off in a worst way. A first pitch home run surrender to Josh Smith. But since then, you know, if, you, if you get a little bit of defensive help, they don't get the two spot in the second. Well, overall, I think they have to be happy with what they've yep. seen from Lewis. Talking about a kid who's only thrown 23 innings this year. He's only made one start. That was a midweek game. If he gets a couple more outs here in the fourth, it would be his longest stint of the year. Yeah, he's there now. Three innings was the most, so he's a three and a third. So, But don't forget now, he was a starter in junior college for two years. So he's been in the starting role before. Matter of fact, last year he went 9-2 and two with a 2-4 ERA at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. 80 innings pitch, 76 strikeouts. You can tell he knows how to pitch. He uses all three of his pitches, the fastball, the breaking ball. Well, you, you mentioned a, a couple of times he's been there before, but obviously he hasn't been there much this year. So what realistically, if everything's going well, how deep could we expect him to go? How many pitches could we expect? Well, I mean, he's the freshest guy they have. You know, I mean, if you go look at, at the bullpen for Southern Miss, I mean, everybody has been used. Matter of fact, most of their main guys have been used twice. And so he was the most likely guy to get the start. But he's only thrown three innings this year. But I think he'll lean on a lot of the experience that he had last year in junior college, maybe navigate his way. But look, if he goes five or six innings and throws up three runs and he can hang some zeros here, I think it's all Scott Berry could have asked for. Ground ball to Gidry. Collects and fires. Two up, two down here in the fourth. As LSU's lineup is left-handed heavy, obviously. Five of the nine starters are left-handed swingers and so LSU doesn't hit as well against left-handers as they do right-handers about 25 points difference Al Hughes had a nasty 0 for going for him 0 for the SEC tournament he was 0 for the regional until last night in his third at bat he stroked a single had to feel awfully good for him. One thing he does do for a guy who's certainly not crushing it at the plate, hitting 179, he does draw some walks now. Well, what he does best, he plays defense. And Paul Maneri throughout the years, if you follow him, he loves the left side of his infield to be very strong defensively. It always has been. And how huge. When you talk about playing defense, I and mean, he's a guy that's very valuable because you can stick him at short, third, second. He can play anywhere in the infield. He's as good as anybody. Father Pete Hughes was a Georgia assistant last year, now the Kansas State head coach. One and two. Standing crowd here at Alex Box Stadium, which opened its doors in 2009. This is 
the box 2.0, if you will. They've led the nation in attendance at LSU for 24 consecutive years. They're not going to find a better fan base in America. Six national championships, five under the legendary Skip Burpin, one for Coach Maneri. And of course, with the job comes very high expectations. Perhaps the expectations for this team were tempered a bit during the middle of the season when a lot of things were going wrong. They went from preseason number one, They're just fighting to host a regional. They're looking more like that preseason top team now. Upstairs, second time Hal Hughes has drawn a walk. And now, trouble. Josh Smith, he's had Josh Lewis his number, a homer and a triple. And here's the pitching coach, Christian Ostrander. going on in the Southern Miss bullpen. I think a, a fair number to hope for if you're Southern Miss from Josh Lewis. You could get me five. Yeah. You can give me five good innings. And then I just got to mix and match for the final four and hope that the offense, which has been pretty productive this weekend, comes through. Well, you get the feeling Southern Miss is going to keep scoring some runs. I mean, the offense has just been too hot this weekend. It really got going in the Conference USA Tournament. They have not slowed down at all in this one. Talk about the home runs they've hit. Over 10 runs a game here in this regional. And you heard Scott Berry talk when we interviewed him. He said, we just got to stay close. And that's the idea. Just stay in within striking distance till late in the ball game. Outside. One and one now to the junior from Greenwell Springs, Louisiana, Josh Smith. Catholic High School. Oh, right here in Baton Rouge. Same high school put out Aaron Nola. And there for a strike. I guess that's the one thing that stands out different from this team maybe to some of the other ones. There is no Aaron Nola, Poche, a Lang per se. Guys that every time they took the bump you expected to throw 100 pitches, give you 7-8. But, but you don't have to have that to win. There's some young guys down there that, 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 that potentially could be near that. A little delayed steal action here. Tag not made. Hal Hughes. It's a valuable 90 feet of real estate that he scoops up. Yeah, that wasn't a straight steal. Almost looked like a delayed steal. Hal Hughes kind of got out and just shuffled, shuffled, and took off late. And boy, how about that slide? Somehow avoided the tag. Kind of pulled a matrix move there to get to the bag without being tagged. It's only the second stolen base of the year for Hughes. So a runner in scoring position. A 2-2 count to the man who's 2-for-2 two two tonight. In 
the air to left. Montenegro. Drifting and putting it away for the third out. Good job again by Josh Lewis. He's keeping Southern Miss in the game. Three to one our score. Winner go home for Southern Miss. LSU in the catbird seat with one in win already. Two wins, I should say, already. No losses, and so they can play a couple games if they need be. Florida State disposed of Georgia quickly. Not once, but twice. The Seminoles already in. They're the first team to punch their ticket to the Super Regional. That means Florida State will play the winner of this regional. And if the winner happens to be LSU, tickets will be on sale very shortly as LSU will get to play at home. Florida State, since this format started in 1999 with the Supers, leading in all-time Super Regionals with 17. LSU has 13. Looking for number 14 if they can pick up a win tonight. Bowen, Donaldson, LeBlanc, 5-6-7 up for the Golden Eagles, who came in as the number three seed. They had to win all four games in the Conference USA Tournament. They did it as they ran by Rice, Marshall, Rice again, and then beat FAU in the final. Southern Miss knows a thing or two about playing in tournaments, and they know a thing or two about being the number three seed when they went to Omaha ten years ago. They were the number three seed. They went to Georgia Tech, knocked off the Yellow Jackets, then went to Gainesville and defeated the Gators twice to advance to the World Series. Leadoff walk issued by Eric Walker. None of these players, of course, were on that World Series team, but they've all been in the postseason every year they played because this is the fourth year in a row that Southern Miss has been in the NCAA tournament. Old Donaldson 0 for 1, the catcher out of St. Charles, Missouri. What else has impressed me about Southern Miss? Their fans. Yes. They've been loud here at the box. Loud. They travel well from Hattiesburg. Plenty of Southern Miss fans here. All of a sudden, Eric Walker can't find it. He's just missing the leadoff walk, 2-0. Already on Donaldson. Pushes it to the right side. And the runner will move to second on the play. Donaldson gets the job done. LeBlanc to the plate for the Golden Eagles. Southern Miss has hit their fair share of home runs this year, 66 now, but they also sacrificed Bunny just like that more than anybody in Conference USA this year. So they can beat you several different ways. Long ball. Or they can manufacture runs too. LeBlanc getting his first start this weekend. And mainly a defensive replacement. See the numbers on the season for the center fielder. Base hit could make it a one-run game. Remember the game, Let's Make a Deal? Yes. All right, let me play Monty Hall. UB Southern Miss, I tell you, considering everything you just went through in the last game, and you've got to start a guy that's only started once all year, and I tell you, if you can take being down two runs in the fifth inning at LSU, or you can take whatever is behind door number two, and take your chances, what would you take? 
I'll take down two runs in the fifth. I'm right there with you. I think so far they've got to feel pretty good about things. And we didn't know what in the world to expect out of Josh Lewis. And I'm not sure Scott Berry knew what to expect, right? And then when the first pitch of the game went about 380 feet for a home run, you really wondered what would happen. But Josh Lewis has settled down. Gives up two more in the second, but 2-0 since then. And Southern Miss has struck for one in the fourth. And we got a tight ball game. You get the home run by Montenegro. With a little spark for the offense. You know there's more in there. Big at bat here for LeBlanc. Long looking from Eric Walker. Comes inside and it's hammered foul. But what you all see happen in the postseason, you start to get some performances from some guys that weren't big for you during the year. And that seems to separate the teams that continue forward and the teams that continue to make those deep runs. And it's really been a perfect example. Storm Cooper, not a whole lot of it. Bats down at the bottom. He has been huge for Southern Miss, the bottom part of the lineup in this regional. Now you get Josh Lewis on the mound, who's only had one start the entire season. I would add Matthew Guidry, not exactly a home run hitter, but he's got two bombs in this regional. And Montenegro's been good all year long, but he's playing like an All-American this weekend. Yeah. yeah, he's really been the spark plug at the top for him. Gets on base a lot, hitting 338 coming in. But it's a, it's a pretty deep lineup. I mean, look, Guidry's got 46 RBIs. Slater's got 59. Walter's got 60. Bowen's got 51 RBIs. Those are strong numbers. Those are strong numbers for any body's middle part of the line. Two balls, two strikes. There's Gabe Montenegro craving his next at bat. Some good ink on the left bicep there. Yeah. Tough play for the first baseman. Reed tosses. Oh, my, he got him. They will review this almost certainly. But if it holds up, what a terrific play. Yeah, they're going to take a look at this one, but it doesn't matter. What an outstanding play by Chris Reed and Eric Walker. Chris Reed, mainly a third baseman throughout his four years at LSU. But how Hughes is playing third. Chris Reed's over at first base. And watch this back in. This ball is a dart. It comes up on him at the last second. He knocks it down. Nice toss over to Eric Walker. But it's a little bit in front of him. And, boy, they step on the base almost at the exact same time. Oof. It's going to be tough. First of all, Walker, you can see he played some football. He flew to the bag. Ooh. Now from that angle, the left foot of LeBlanc might beat the right foot of Walker. And watch where LeBlanc steps to. As a base runner, you'd like to step on the front part of the bag. It's the shortest distance. That's exactly where he steps. He steps in the middle part of that bag. He is definitely out. But now that he got to the front part of the bag, they may overturn this one. Uh, this is a huge call because you just don't know how many opportunities you're going to have against Eric Walker. It's a good play all the way around. A lot of hustle by LeBlanc to get down the line. We've had six reviews in this regional. They've all been confirmed as the right call on the field so far. I think this one's the closest one we've had to actually being overturned. Yes, I agree. And I mean, it is so close. By now, you know the deal, no matter what the sport is. It has to be indisputable video evidence. And there is no 
tie goes to the runner. Right. There's no truth to that at all. So you're out of safe. Gosh, it just doesn't get much closer. It is hard to make that call. I mean, hard. And, and you couldn't get a better angle. It's not like... I mean, that angle tells it all. We're sitting there. This is super slow-mo. Left foot, right foot. You know, it's one of those... If they ruled him safe on the field, there's no way they overturned. That's right. But they ruled him out. And that's why the call on the field matters a lot on those close, close plays. Because if they can't tell for sure, obviously the call on the field will stand. And it is safe. I actually think that's the right call. I'm a little surprised they overturned it. But I think it's the right call. And I mean by a big toe is what the difference of that was. Still an outstanding effort by Reed and Walker on the play. But now Southern Miss is in business here in the fifth. They're at the corners, one out. And this is when you have the to play. Be, you have to be good here. When you don't need a base hit to score a run, and that's where Southern Miss is right now. Have to get at least a run. Danny Lynch batting right now. You're looking for something just like that up out over the plate. Something you can drive out of the infield. If you get a base hit, it's icing on the cake. But the main thing is get the ball out of the infield for a sacrifice fly. Eric Walker, although he doesn't create a whole lot of ground balls. He would love a ground ball right here. Opportunity to turn a ground ball double play and get out of this thing. Two hits now off of Eric Walker. The homer by Montenegro, an infield single by LeBlanc. That one squirts away, and the runner at thirds will stay put. Bowen stays. LeBlanc to second on the wild pitch. Third base coach for Southern Miss is also the head coach, Scott Berry. There goes your ground ball double play. Now does LSU come in with the infield position and try to cut the run off of the plate? Doesn't look like they are. Both middle film, middle infield for LSU. Josh Smith, Grant Broussard back in the back of the grass. They'll concede the run. So now your job just got a little bit easier at home plate. Just a routine ground ball to one of your middle infielders will work. This one you think strikeout. First you're thinking ground ball, first and third. Now you get to one, two. You can take a shot or two for a strikeout. Jerks that one foul. And he turned on it. It was 85 in her third. Yeah. Missed the spot though. You could see Saul Garza, the catcher from LSU, kind of got up a little bit, gave the target a high target. He wanted that chest high fastball to try to get a swing through. Eric Walker threw it about 10 inches below that. But you sped the bat up. Now do you come back with the all-speed pitch. Walker, a fly ball pitcher, the only out on the ground was on the sacrifice by Donaldson. Lynch only has two home runs in the year, but one of them was in this regional. Well, down in the way is where you know you can keep him in the yard. The only question is, does he shoot it the other way for a base hit? I still think changeup is the right pitch if you get it down. It's got to be down.
six pitches in the at bat for Danny Lynch. Walker with pitch number 69. Golfed and into right field. Base hit. This will play the pair. Southern Miss has tied it up. Sometimes you just got to tip your hat. He finally goes to the changeup, and it was a good pitch. Kind of down and away, maybe middle away. Look at this. That's not even a strike, but Lynch goes down. Watch this move. The body doesn't go forward. It goes down instead. He stays behind the baseball and just drives a line drive right over Brad Broussard's head, and we got a tie ball game. How about that? Seven pitch at bat, fought off some really tough pitches, and then takes a pitch that's not even a strike. You hit out in right center field for a two RBI single. Lynch takes out the nine iron to tie it up. Southern Miss just having fun now. That is a giddy dugout considering what has happened in the last four or five hours. Well, they're as loose as any team. Because they're playing with house money they right are, now. Oh, you took the word. We're, no. not too, we're not too far from some casinos, yeah. right? They're playing with house money. Nobody expected them to be here. Especially after the last game. They were down, what, 10-2 to two in that ball game? Nobody gave them a chance at all beating Arizona State. But yet they come back and score seven runs in the final two innings to beat Arizona State in the finals of this region. Matthew Beck starting to heat up. Popped him up. Cooper. And it'll be Smith getting the glove on it. Two away. And back to the top of the order. And the red-hot Gabe Montenegro. You can just tell the way he walks up to the plate. It is all business. I'm telling you what, he packs a wallop when he goes to the plate. Five homers coming in, and watch this swing. Just a fastball, and what a move that was to get to that ball. Borderline strike inside, but he jerked the hands in and jerked the barrel on it. Father played for the Guatemalan national team. Mother swam in the 04 Olympics. Scott Berry was joking with us. Says, yeah, Mama Montenegro swam in the Olympics. Hasn't gotten in a pool since. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a walk-off, right? Yeah. That's that's basically called it, I'm done. Yep. That's a mic drop. See ya. Maybe the hot tub. Oh, not a pool. And that is a confident swing right there. That's not a swing swinging, well, I hope I hit it. That's a swing saying, I'm fixing to punish you. Well, one thing with these smaller, more diminutive guys in stature, it, it, they're usually nice and compact. Not real noisy. Not a whole lot of moving parts. Quick hands and just get the barrel through. But he's got some juice in those hands. Yes, he does. And you see the ball just explodes off the bat. Well, it's about bat speed. And although he's a little guy, you talked about some of the guys around the league. But I know Jose Altuve is one of those guys. <laughs> I mean, look at the right of your screen there. That's Garza, the catcher. He's not exactly Will Chamberlain, but it's like a giant. Yeah. Don't forget about Alex Bregman. He's not a big guy either, right? He's putting up big numbers, real big numbers. Pitch number 75. And Montenegro will see another. You see where Eric Walker is staying in this at bat, because that last at bat he tried to come inside, went for a home run. Everything has been away in this bat so far. This will be Eric Walker's 30th pitch of the fifth inning. Heck of a job not to pull the trigger on that one. Montenegro is seeing it so good right now.
and he's got an idea of how they're pitching him, too, because you kind of see him scooting up on the plate a little bit. And if you'll watch him, when he strides, he's leaning a little bit out towards the outside part of the plate. These hitters are smart. They know if you take take one of their pitches and you hit it for a home run, you can almost eliminate that pitch the next time up. And the stressful inning for Eric Walker continues. He only needed 46 pitches in the first four innings combined. He's thrown 32 here in the fifth. Southern Miss with two runs in. Runner at first, two outs, and a lengthy at bat to Montenegro. Off the plate, outside. That is a big league at bat. Do it, baby. Do it, man. Let's go. And we were handed a uh, ballot for all regional team. You and I might be a little too busy to fill that out, but uh, you can go ahead and put Montenegro's name on it now and just hand it in. No doubt. That kid's impressive. Eric Walker is going to give way to Matthew Beck. 3-3 here in Baton Rouge. Well, there aren't many pitchers that can look my partner here in the booth eye to eye, but the six foot seven Matthew Beck is one. The junior out of Alexandria, Louisiana will spell Eric Walker. Yeah, Matthew Beck right over the top of the fastball. It's 88 to 90. And one of those high spin rate fastballs, we talk about the analytics, means it stays on plane just a little bit longer. So you'll see him purposely pitch up to the upper quadrant of the strike zone. But his out pitch is that big overhand breaking ball. And it's one of those 12 to 6 type breaking balls. He's been really good as of late. Matter of fact, his last eight and a third innings all been shut out in his four appearances. You see the numbers on the year. Facing another guy who's been locked in in this regional, Matthew Guidry. 0 for 2 today against Eric Walker. And by the way, if you were to take bets before this game started, who would last longer, Eric Walker, the veteran starter for LSU, or Josh Lewis, a guy that has started one game all year long? I'm guessing very few people would place their chips on Josh Lewis. The longest outing of the season already for Lewis. And Eric Walker has to exit here in the fifth with the game tied. Two on, two outs, and now a 2-0 count to Matthew Guidry. Guidry who rests that bat on the back shoulder. Tardy on that fastball. 89 and right on by. Yep, and right at the top of the zone. Side three and one. We haven't seen many bad swings by Southern Miss. I know they only have three hits, but you're not seeing them swing at balls out of the zone very often. No, they've been locked in. They got locked in the Conference USA tournament. They are still locked in. Team batting average up to 290 now, averaging seven runs a game for the season. In the air, left center. That's sinking. That's going to drop for a base hit. Southern Miss is going to take the lead. Golden Eagles three for three with runners in scoring position tonight. And Matthew Guidry continues to produce this weekend. Matthew Guidry stays hot as well. Slices this ball right over Josh Smith's head. No way Zach Watson gets to it. New Danny Lynch would score easily as he comes around with the fourth run of the game. Third run this inning here in the fifth inning. And all of a sudden, 
Southern Miss with a 4-3 lead. How many times has Southern Miss scored a run with two outs in this tournament? Seemed like every run they got against Arizona State in two games came with two outs. And here we go here with another two-out RBI. Eighth man to come to the plate is Hunter Slater. And the first baseman is 0 for 2 tonight. Okay, I asked the question, I got an answer. 25 outs, excuse me, 25 runs with two outs in this regional for Southern Miss. That's incredulous. I mean, <laughs> That's winning baseball is what that is. Two out base hits. And two out base hits with runners in scoring position even better. Slater down to the count, no balls, two strikes. Hunter Slater, whose father was an offensive lineman for Southern Miss back in the day and used to block for future Hall of Famer Brett Favre. Southern Miss already collecting its 40th win of the season earlier today. That's the 12th 40 win season. Fourth in a row for Southern Miss. They won 44 last year. They won 50 two years ago. In other words, this is not some Johnny come lately. No. Well, since Scott Berry's been there, he's averaged 39 wins a season. Tell you how consistent they have been. This is what I'm talking about, how locked in they are. They're spoiling pitches with two strikes. They're taking pitches that are out of the zone. And look, it's top to bottom. It's just not like three or four guys right. doing it. They're doing it one through nine. Like I mean, th these aren't bad pitches from Eric Walker and now Matthew Beck. These are just really good at bats. The most dangerous of them all is on deck and Matt Walner and he's been kept in check tonight he's over two boy would they love to get him up with they with runners on here in the fifth off the plate outside another three ball count again they're, they're, if you can throw it off the black they're not going to offer Just absolutely locked in. What does it come with here, Ben? I think you got to throw the breaking ball. That's what I'd like to throw. I don't know how much confidence he's got in it. Comes up a fastball, fouls it away. So this is the guy you want. You don't want the guy on deck mm. with the bases loaded. Slater steps back in the box, awaiting an eighth pitch in this at bat from Matthew Beck. Low and in, ball four. Oh my. Matthew Beck is in the soup now. Sacks packed for Southern Miss. The all time home run leader in the history of of Southern Miss baseball at the plate. The guy is going to be drafted tomorrow night in the early rounds. And Matt Walner, who's already homered twice this weekend, will try to provide the biggest hit of them all right here. Chant off going on. 
A lot of LSU, a lot of USM being screamed out. Big first strike pitch for Beck. Beautiful pitch buried on the inside corner for strike two. Yeah, it didn't look like that's where Matthew Beck tried to throw it. Almost how like Garza gave him a high target. He wanted that high fastball just up out of the zone, but instead it was a perfect pitch on the inside corner. Now do you bounce the breaking ball or do you try to go upstairs again? Oh and two to Walner. Didn't flinch at that one. And that's what we've been seeing all weekend from a lot of these pitching coaches that are calling the pitches. Change the eye level with two strikes. That normally sets up the breaking ball to throw the breaking ball right behind it. We'll see if Matthew Beck goes to the overhand breaking ball. Smoked foul. Montenegro at third, Gidry at second, Slater at first. Just got a piece of that breaking ball. Right off the end of the bat. But that's another good example of what the Golden Eagles have been able to do all weekend long. Extended bats. Fight off some really tough pitches. Extended bats and hope the pitcher makes a mistake. Walner the junior from Forest Lake, Minnesota. Nowhere near. Garza has to spear that one. Well, and for me, that 2 2 count, this is when you got to make it happen as a pitcher. You don't want to get to a predictable count. Whatever the pitch you've got that you have that you have the most confidence in. That'd be the biggest pitch of the game for Southern Miss. Just fought it off. And that's a pretty good breaking ball, too. <laughs> so that's two breaking balls, two really good breaking balls that Matt Walden's been able to fight off. And again, it's not just about power with him. I mean, the average is up every year as well since his freshman year. Hits well over 300. Power numbers are always there. But the batting average. Another lengthy at bat. This will be pitch number eight to Matt Walden. Spits on ball three. You think they're having fun? Nothing to lose. House money if you're Southern Miss. It's the best time of the season. School's out. You're in the playoffs. You're in the finals of a regional. They're getting better than this. 21 pitches for three batters faced for Matthew Beck. They are making him work. Traveling time for the Golden Eagles. Got him! What a battle, but finally the breaking ball works for Matthew Beck as Walner goes down on strikes. And Southern Miss does bat around and puts three on the board to take the lead.
Set to go, bottom of the fifth. Southern Miss leading LSU 4-3. to three. Tickets already punched to the Supers. Hey, we got a Final Four brewing. North Carolina and Duke, but it's baseball, though. Florida State, Texas Tech. Hey, they're a Final Four team as well in basketball. The first Super matchup is set. North Carolina and the Auburn Tigers. What a job by Butch Thompson. Yeah, Butch Thompson's bunch has fought off so much adversity this year. Davis Daniels, their ace goes down. Didn't even hardly pitch this year. They lose Jack Owen, their number two guy. And they lose Tanner Burns for a couple of weekends. Mm -hmm. And yet Auburn on their way to another Super Regional back-to-back -back years. Barely lost to Florida in games the last year. Almost got to Omaha. Broussard, Duplantis, Cabrera, 2-3-4 up. Let's see now how Josh Lewis responds. He was sitting around for about a half hour during that last inning. He's finally got a lead to work with. He's had 65 pitches and a 3-1 delivery. Paints the outside corner. With a changeup, no less. 3-1 count. Expecting fastball. Get an 82-mile-an-hour changeup from Josh Lewis. To even it up, 3-2. Got him. That's how you respond. How about back-to-back -back changeups? Who is that masked man? 3-1 changeup. Run the count, 3-2. You back that up with another one, an even better one. As it dove down, Grant Broussard couldn't pick up a piece of it. It's not just that Josh Lewis, as you watch another devastating changeup, it's not just that Josh Lewis is only starting his second game of the year. It's not as if his numbers were glorious out of the bullpen either. Came into this game with an ERA of 5.87. Picked by Lynch, right was across, two up, two down. So to say that he has exceeded expectations would be the understatement of the regional. Everything Scott Berry has touched has turned to gold here in this regional. Two gone for Daniel Cabrera. Cabrera 0 for 1 with a walk. Eighth consecutive regional final for LSU. That's tied for the longest streak actively. Louisville also with eight. Lofted in the air, right center. LeBlanc racing and it spills out. Oh, he had it right in the glove. LeBlanc had to cover a lot of ground just to catch up to that ball. Almost made a fine play. He just never got in the glove. Looked like he closed his glove just a tick too soon. Hits right on top of the glove and pops away. And that might be the break LSU needed. Two out because Josh Lewis was cruising. Boy, oh boy. Southern Miss just cannot go long into a game without something defensively going wrong. It goes down as an error, E8. And now you're going to make Josh Lewis work a little extra here in the fifth and face Zach Watson. Watson, who's been lethal in postseason play. Six home runs in five Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge regional games. He told us last night after the game, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to hit homers. 
Yeah, I didn't expect him to say that. <laughs> Homers are normally an accident. In the air to center, Wabla will have a chance at redemption. And he will gladly put the squeeze on that one. So Lewis dodges the bullet. We're through five. Southern Miss trying to pull off a stunner. Welcome back to NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. 4-4-2 four, four, and two for Southern Miss. 3-4-0 and oh for LSU. And the Tigers tapping into the bullpen for the second time tonight. It's Trent Wittmeyer, the sophomore from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I tell you what, he's made a big jump this year. Last year he was really good early, then kind of fell out of favor, but the numbers have been better. Don't be fooled by that ERA. He's had a couple of bad outings mixed in there, but all in all he's been pretty good. 31 innings pitch, 31 strikeouts, 3-1 to strikeout to walk ratio. You're going to see a fastball that's going to be 88. And he'll bump a 91 occasionally. Hard, tight slider and a change up as well. An all-conference defensive end in football at Montour High School in Pittsburgh. Bowen will start things off. 5 6 7 2 up in the Golden Eagle lineup. And the way this game started, it was not looking great for Southern Miss. Eric Walker, the LSU starter, was perfect through three. The first pitch of the game from Josh Lewis was hit for a home run by Josh Smith to go up 1-0. Two more runs for LSU in the second. 3 to nothing. momentum, crowd, everything on the side of LSU and Southern Miss. Looked like a team that maybe was happy to get to this point, but time to run out of gas. Boy, have they turn that narrative around can of corn for Cabrera and now the catcher Cole Donaldson it up and catch will be made by Garza big fella move around a little bit huh talk about fill out a uniform nearly 6'4 240 pounds balled up watch this takes the mask off keeps it in his hand and easily runs this ball down fans not booing they're sawing Now Hunter LeBlanc. LeBlanc had the infield single and later scored in that three-run fifth inning for Southern Miss. Last time LSU lost a super here, Houston did him in. That's a pretty good Houston team. Is that a super or was that a regional? I believe that was a regional. Houston. Here, yeah. yes. Houston used to be in Conference USA along with Southern Miss. They've since departed to the American. A lot of foul balls with two strikes, and it doesn't seem like much. But Southern Miss 
making every LSU pitcher work overtime to get you out. This ball reading last night by LSU pitchers was 93. Huh. 93, but to 98 for everybody that came in. A lot of the power arms were used last night. I think so. The Miss only got five hits, and they got one swing. They got four runs by one swing. The glare from Wittmeyer. And another good at bat, but it will be snagged by Smith. One, two, three inning for Wittmeyer. Southern Miss still up a run. Every pitch, every moment, every game. From now to the final out of the College World Series in Omaha, we've got you covered on the ESPN Networks and the Bases Loaded channel, as well as the ESPN app. Check it out if you have not already. I know many of you are watching tonight on the app. Mike Morgan, Ben McDonald, glad to have you along. Josh Lewis has been the story thus far. The virtual no-name for Southern Miss. Getting his second start of the year. He's worked 23 innings all year. The junior college transfer. He has been up to the task so far tonight. So has that man, Garza. He's been up to the task for about a month and a half. Yeah, well, he's been the difference maker in this LSU lineup. They are, for most of the year, the seven, eight, nine hitters for LSU unable to produce. And all of a sudden, Saul Garza got healthy and he got hot. And since then, he has carried. This LSU lineup for the better part of five weeks. It snaps a streak of four straight innings for Lewis where he retired the leadoff man. So now a more daunting task here. Beloso at the dish. Beloso originally when we got the starting lineups was hitting fifth. And then I think Paul Maneri saw that there was a lefty starting and put him down a couple spots to the seven hole. And with 78 pitches under the belt of Lewis, this is where you start getting a little nervous if you're Scott Berry. But he continues to pitch. I mean, in and out with the fastball. Showing a really good change up at times. You got Brant Broussard to swing through a couple of them for a big strikeout last inning. Enough of a breaking ball to keep you honest. And right there, he has, for the most part, stayed out of the middle of the plate. Really, the only fastball I can think of that was a huge mistake was the first pitch of the game to Josh Smith. Ended right. up right down the middle of the plate. Since then, he has stayed on the corners. It was almost as if he needed to get that one out of his system. Yeah. Well, like, you know, we always talk about the first inning, you know, and, and those are the toughest ones for pitchers. Because you, you, you're trying to, you hope you have your rhythm when it starts, but a lot of times you don't. Diving stop by Gidry, and then it bobbles and spills out of the glove. Now, again, it, it's a base hit. But man, oh man, Southern Miss makes life a lot more difficult. Yeah, this is a really tough chance here. Because your second baseman, Gidry, he's shaded over more towards the hole. He's in double play depth. So he has to come a long way to get to it, and it would have been an extraordinary play if he pulls it off, but he does it. LSU first and second here, top, bottom of the sixth, and no one out. Ostrander out to talk to his left-hander. He says, I'm fine. You just wonder what LSU's going to do in this situation. One run down, first and second, nobody out. You got Chris Reed at the plate. You think it's a sacrifice situation in this part of the ball game. In the infield out there to talk some defensive strategy as well, not just for Josh Lewis right now. They got multiple huddles. Kind of looks like a football game, yeah. right? Offense huddling up, defense huddling up. First down and ten. See Paul Maneri giving his orders. 
And I got to believe the sacrifice bunt is on. That's something you never see in the pro game, right? Offensively, button, bunch of, no, bunch of, well, that too. <laughs> but a bunch of guys huddled around the manager to talk offensive strategy. Well, you hope by the time you get to pro ball, especially the big league level, that you understand the situations, you know what to do. You're just waiting for the signs to come from the third base coach. This level, you want to make sure if this happens, this is what we're going to do. If they do this, this is what we're going to do. Corners coming in. And there he is squaring. Perfect bunt. Gonna have to hurry at first. Got him. You hold your breath every time Southern Miss has to make a throw. But that time Lynch was right on target. Sacrifice is true for Reed. Two in scoring position for the Bayou Bengals. That is well done all the way around. A really good bunt by Chris Reed on the line. You forced the third baseman to come field the baseball. Why? Because that vacates third base. Runners can advance from there. Really a nice job by Lynch. He came in and make a good strong throw across the diamond. Now, can Howe Hughes do it? Can Howe Hughes find a way? One out, runner at third base, tying run just 90 feet away. Don't need a base hit. Middle infielders play in back for Southern Miss. Hughes has walked twice. Josh Lewis's stay on the mound might depend on how he fares in this at bat against Hughes. I think if you're Hal Hughes right now, the old game of Pepper, we've all played Pepper. Mm -hmm. You're thinking, if I could play Pepper with the shortstop or second baseman right here, we're going to tie the game up. That's the idea. Nothing more than that. If you find the hole, that's icing on the cake. It sounds simple. It's hard to do in a situation like this. And that's what Southern Miss is telling you by playing the middle and fillers back. They're saying, you know what? If you can hit a routine ground ball, we're going to let you tie the game up. One and two. Does Josh Lewis have an out pitch right here? Does he have a strikeout pitch? Well, his best out pitch to me has been the changeup. You saw him get Brant Bruce on through two really good ones. And that's why I think if you're how huge, you got to see it deep. Because he's not showing you enough fastball to blow it by you, right? I mean, it's not like it's a 94-mile-an-hour fastball. So maybe you think about taking the fastball to the right side. If you get a changeup, you got enough barrel left to hit the, the changeup to the left side. Goes with a breaking ball, and it works perfectly. In the air to center. It's going to be Cooper making the catch, so an unproductive out for Hughes, and a great job by Lewis. Still has a chance to get out of this. That is huge. That is the biggest out of the game for Josh Lewis and Southern Miss. And, yep, they're going to go ahead. He wants no part of Josh Smith. Forget about lefty on lefty. Smith has worn him out in a couple of at-bats. So the intentional walk loads the bases. And out at every base, and Broussard to the plate, who is 0 for 3. Yeah, and I think it's the right move. I mean, Josh Smith hitting almost 100 points higher than Brant Broussard. Although well, Broussard's been hot as of late. Made the all-tournament team for his offensive performances at the SEC tournament. And it's been the lefties tonight who have had most of the success against Lewis. Change up again. To shortstop, and a race to the bag is won by Cooper. Josh Lewis. Oh, you talk about an effort. I mean an effort. First and third. Only one out. He gets the easy pop-up and a weak ground ball, and all of a sudden Southern Miss still in front four to three. LSU has out hit Southern Miss 6-4, but the Tigers have left eight men on. Opportunistic hitting 
for the Golden Eagles. A solo home run by Montenegro. An RBI single by Guidry and a two-run single by Danny Lynch, the eight-hole hitter. All of that has been overshadowed by an unsung hero by the name of Josh Lewis, who came in with one start and a 5.87 ERA. And he has been able to minimize damage tonight and give Southern Miss not what it wanted to have, what it had to have in order to have a chance to win this game. Lynch, Cooper, and back to the top in Montenegro. LSU with a win. Will be hosting a Super Regional against Florida State. Southern Miss with a win. We're back at it tomorrow night. Two balls, two strikes on the third baseman. Danny Lynch, who had one of the biggest hits of the night, the two-run single in that fifth inning. Nothing Southern Miss has been able to do by virtue of the score of the last few innings. Silence this crowd a little bit. That's not easy to do. Well, Southern Miss has taken all the momentum. I mean, every bit of it to this point. Crowd had plenty to cheer about early on in this game. Josh Smith hits a home run on the first pitch for LSU. And then the same inning, Antoine Duplantis finally gets hit number 353 to break the record and become the all-time hits king at LSU. And they score two in the second. And it's like, okay, Southern Miss, you're a nice story. Thank you much. Pat on the back. Good luck next year. And business as usual, LSU will win another home regional. But Southern Miss had other ideas. To say that this team has resolve would be putting it mildly after what they did just to get to this game earlier today. Seven runs in the final two innings to walk it off against a very talented Arizona State team. Strike three. Foul tip. Wentz retired. Well, their backs have been against the wall for a while, Southern Misses. I mean, they, they were a team on the outside looking. They weren't even going to be in the NCAA tournament when the Conference USA began mm -hmm. the tournament. And... They blow through it and secure that automatic bid. And that momentum they gained there has certainly carried over to this Baton Rouge Regional. And for those that think, well, okay, yeah, but it was Conference USA. They had to win three games just to get to the championship game. The team they beat in the championship game made it to the NCAA tournament as an at-large, talking about FAU. They actually shut out the Owls in the title game. It's an FAU program that is in the big dance more often than not under Coach Mack. Storm Cooper. Arizona State's going to have nightmares about this guy. Garza set up outside, and that's exactly where Vic Meyer delivered it. Yeah, a little cut fastball, hard slider, whatever you want to call it. Something new for Vic Meyer. Had a breaking ball last year, had a little more loop to it. He decided to tighten it up a little bit. It's been a lot more effective for him this year. Swing and a miss, strike three. Two down. Well, Vic Meyer's got it going. You can see it in his eyes, too. You don't think he wants it? 
Really good breaking ball to get strike two. But he's got enough of a fastball as Dittmar. If you start looking for that breaking ball, he can get 91 right by you. Now the guy who's become the hardest out in this lineup in the two games today, Montenegro. Buckle up because it could be another lengthy at bat. They always seem to be with this guy. Meanwhile, Josh Lewis trying to stay loose and come out for a seventh inning. What's going through his mind right now? Nobody wake him up. Just let him keep doing what he's doing. See, nobody, nobody's talking to him. Nobody's around him. Just leave him alone because he's in his own world right now. And that world is perfect for him. Montenegro belted his sixth home run of the year back in the fourth inning. Challenged him with a fastball, and that kid will turn on it every time. 93. Didn't matter. Seven hits in one day for Gabe Montenegro. <laughs> they can run a little bit too. Now, Southern Miss doesn't steal a lot of bases. Only 42 stolen bases on the year. That's seventh best in Conference USA. But how about that balance swing? That's a guy that's seeing it really good right now. But don't be surprised if Montenegro takes off in this situation. So the miss up by one. LSU's had some trouble this year throwing out runners. Bad throw. Montenegro will get to second. Throwing error on Wittmeyer. Well, Matthew Guidry, base hit could add an important insurance run here in the seventh. USM three for four with runners in scoring position tonight. We already told you how many times they've driven in a run with two outs in this tournament. I mean, it's uncanny. Twenty-four two-out runs for Southern Miss in this regional. I'd like to know what they're hitting as runs in scoring position. It's got to be awfully high. Should be fielded by Smith. It is. And Wittmeyer gets out of it. Josh Lewis going to come out for inning number seven. 4-3 game in Baton Rouge. An illustrious career for Antoine Duplantis, who made history tonight in his first at bat. Base hit up the middle, number 353 for his career. That surpasses Eddie Furness, number one all-time at LSU. It's number two all-time in the SEC behind Jake Mangum, who's still playing for Mississippi State. Athletic family. There's a lot of trophies in the Duplantis household. But make room for something else on the mantle. Duplantis right now more concerned about leading his team to victory. Down by a run, bottom of the seventh. And Josh Lewis inexplicably still on the mound. 87 pitches. He has been masterful tonight and has surpassed anybody's expectations. Well, he's just pitched. I, mean, I don't know how else to say it. Just a pitcher. He's pitched behind in the count. He's throwing something other than a fastball when he's gotten behind at times. That changeup has been really good for him. He's showing a little breaking ball. And he's done that. He said, out of the middle of the plate. To Plantis with his second hit of the night. And for the second straight inning, LSU has the leadoff man aboard. Well, that's Antoine Duplantis right there at his finest. 
Taking a pitch away off the plate, not trying to pull it. Watch the hands go first. The barrel follows it. Front shoulder stays on the left-handed pitcher. He's not leaning away. He's staying through the baseball. Lewis only has one strikeout the whole night. I was just going to say so the same thing. He's got four walks and one strikeout. Pitching the contact. He doesn't exactly have a stellar defense behind him, but so far the formula has worked. Yeah, in the college game, though, if you're going to look at the college game, these are the kind of pitchers that give a lot of teams trouble because SEC teams are used to seeing what on the weekends? 90 to 95, sure. 96 power breaking balls, just really big time stuff. And all of a sudden, you get a pitcher that's below hitting speed, gets you a little bit out in front, and he misses the barrels. Doesn't strike out a lot of guys, but he catches off the end of the bat a lot. That'll find the hole on the right side. Duplantis motoring around second. The throw. Everybody's safe. And it looked like Walner might have taken a little too much time firing the third. That allowed Duplantis to get there. And, of course, a heads-up base running play by Cabrera. Well, speed is so important. I believe Walner, because Walner's got a cannon for an arm, but I didn't think he thought in the back of his mind, there is no way Antoine Duplantis goes first to third on a shallow ball like this. And he's got a cannon, but he didn't get to it quickly enough. And how about the heads-up base running? Daniel Cabrera rounds first base like you're supposed to. He reads a high throw going to third. He takes an extra 90 feet. It was almost as if Walner was saying, go ahead, I dare you. Duplantis did. And the hesitation really made it an easy play with Duplantis' speed. Yeah, Duplantis never picked up third base coach Nolan Kane. He did that on his own because the play's in front of him as he's running towards second base. And he just gauged it. And that's kind of an internal clock for Anton Duplantis. He understands the ball wasn't crushed. It was going to take a little bit of time for Walter to get there. I'm going to make you throw me out. Either one of these balls, by the way, have been hit that hard. I mean, Josh Lewis is doing the same thing he's been doing for the better part of six plus innings but right now this is the biggest jam he's been in in a while and you just wonder how much longer can you go with him well it looks like that's going to be it no matter what happens the rest of the way that young man deserves a whole lot of love from his teammates heroic effort by Josh Lewis or the folks in Theodore, Alabama, his hometown, you can bet they're jumping up and down right now. Just a yeoman's effort. Young man that had one start this year. The longest he'd gone the entire season was three innings. And what does he do? He comes into a hostile environment, works all the way into the bottom of the seventh inning for Southern Miss. We'll tell you more about Jared Wright, the new pitcher, when we come back from the box. Now Josh Lewis with a much-deserved cold beverage, high fives, handshakes, pats on the back, and everything else to express the appreciation for what he gave his team tonight. Pure guts out there for much of those six-plus innings, but now you got to turn it over to a depleted bullpen. Jared Wright is a senior that hasn't worked a whole lot this year, and when he has, the numbers have not been great. Well, he's a fresh arm, though. Hasn't pitched yet in this one that I can remember. Fastball's 88 to 90. You see the numbers on the year. 25 innings pitch, 35 hits. Walks are a concern as well. 18 walks and 25 innings pitch. We've seen some pitchers that haven't been in this spot before go out on the mound in front of 10,000 LSU fans and melt under the pressure. And here LSU is again. Infield playing back, middle infield. Runner at third base, the tie and run. Got to find a way to get him in. You don't need a base hit to do it. Zach Watson, hitless tonight, but overall has been on a tear at regional play.
the dam finally breaks. How about Zach Watson? So hot in this regional. Nothing show in this game tonight, but boy, he gets a fastball. And I'm talking about center cut. How about a little back flipping in? You knew he had that one. He knew it right away. Drives in two. LSU takes a one run lead here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Sal Garza. A single and three trips to the plate. Runner on the go. Little hit and run action. Run and hit. Whatever you want to call it. Zach Watson can run. A lot like Antoine Duplantis, Josh Smith, all above average runners. Center long run for LeBlanc. LeBlanc runs out of room. It's off the base of the wall. Rounding third and coming home is Watson. Tigers up by two. Well, Saul got into that one. You talk about raw power, but just as impressive as the read. Watch Zach Watson. He reads this right away, picks up the center fielder, and right away he knows that ball is going to fall in. He scores all the way from first base. He checks it one more time, coming around second. Easily scores, and LSU with a three spot here in the bottom of the seventh. This all started with two ground balls, not hit that sharply, but finding holes on the infield by Duplantis and Cabrera. That spelled the end of Josh Lewis, and this might spell the end of Jared Wright. It's a lot to ask for a young man who hasn't worked a whole lot of games this year. And you come out in a key spot at this venue against this lineup. Another call to the bullpen, Adam Jackson, a lefty, will come in for Southern Miss as we'll keep it here. In the bottom of the seventh, six to four, our score. Mike Morgan, Ben McDonald, and you know, Ben, I, I cannot say enough about Southern Miss tonight. But eventually, you knew LSU was going to get to the starter, and eventually the bullpen was going to have to do something for Southern Miss, considering how depleted it is. That's a lot to ask. Yeah, I mean, look, Josh Lewis did everything that was expected of him and more. The truth of the matter is, Southern Miss wore out a lot of arms to get to this point, so you got what you wanted out of Josh Smith. This LSU offense, too, a lot like Southern Miss, it's been hot, too. I mean, LSU found a way to win three ball games in the SEC tournament just to get the top 16 national seed here in Baton Rouge. And, there's no quit in LSU, just like there's no quit in Southern Miss. Adam Jackson, who's worked all of 18 innings all year long. I mean, you're really just finding anybody you can find at this point if you're Scott Berry. Again, the Florida State Seminoles awaiting the winner of this regional. Mike Martin and company already rising from the ashes of a bubble team going on the road to Athens and knocking out the Georgia Bulldogs with two blows. Oh, the Seminoles make another super and if LSU holds on and wins it, they will host the Seminoles in the Super Regionals. We've got a chance at four all SEC Super Regionals. Yeah. I don't think that's ever happened. The SEC was the dominant conference again this year. If you go around at one point, there were 11 of the 14 teams in the SEC ranked in the top 25 about halfway through the year. And the SEC's had an outstanding regional at this point. Ten teams got in. That tied an all-time record. 
Four teams were top eight national seeds. That tied an all-time record as well. Still nobody out in the inning. LSU certainly not going to call the dogs off here the way Southern Miss has been able to rally multiple times in two games today. Beloso is one for three. Strike on the corner. There's one spot in postseason play where you really see the difference between your power programs and your mid-majors. It's when a team has to go out of the loser's bracket. And you get to this point, and the well becomes pretty empty. It's a high chop to third. And a fine play. Lynch to Slater. Well, you won't see a better play than that. And I mean all-around play. As Lynch came flying in, watch this. Picks it right off the ground right there. Throws it across the diamond, but it's a short hop. And Slater just digs it out of the dirt. Saul Garza cannot advance. One gone for Chris Reed. So defense has been a struggle a little bit, obviously, for Southern Miss this year. But they've made a couple of outstanding plays. Yeah, well, Bly has a great well. diving yes. catch in center. One for two, Chris Reed, the eight-hole hitter. Lefty on lefty and a pitch out of the zone. But think about it. Let's just flip the tables here. Let's say LSU was in Southern Miss's shoes. You still have a number of guys who could start that are proven. You still have a bullpen. Four or five guys that you feel good about going to. That, that's the difference between mm -hmm. these programs. I mean... So, you can go ahead and with that lineup that Southern Miss has, the way they've been hitting it, the team gets hot. You can score enough runs to win out of the loser's bracket. The question becomes, do you have enough pitching? Well, you saw what happened to Arizona State, right? I mean, up 10-2, to 2, but yet the bullpen just could not hold an eight-run lead in the middle part of the game. That is a sizzler. Ricochets off Gidry's glove and a fine recovery there. So two good defensive plays in a row by a team that has struggled all year long on defense. Well, Gidry had one tough chance early and just couldn't quite finish it. This ball is an absolute rocket. He knocks it down quickly, gets to it. And I mean gets Chris Reed by a half step. Now two out here in the bottom of the seventh. You mentioned Jake Mangum earlier. He's broke all kind of records, obviously, this year. But we got a Jake Mangum just got his 100th hit of the season. He's the first Mississippi State player in history with multiple 100-hit seasons. That's a mouthful there. To shortstop Cooper in time. So credit to Jackson minimizing the damage, but LSU puts together a three spot. Yeah, Duplantis starts it off. Daniel Cabrera gets a base hit. Spurs at third. Zach Watson drives both of them in with a rock up the middle. Saul Garza off the wall to right center field. Pushes Watson home. And Tigers take the lead. 6-4. to four. Welcome back to NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. And for more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. LSU trying to put a lid on this bracket in Baton Rouge with a victory tonight. Southern Miss trying to force an additional game tomorrow. Down to familiar territory for the Golden Eagles. They've had a flair for the dramatics already today. Seven runs in the eighth and ninth to come from behind and walk off Arizona State. They don't need quite that many against LSU here and a good part of the lineup. Slater, Walner, and Bowen. Yeah, well, 
If there's any team right now not going to panic, it's not Southern Miss. They might be comfortable in this situation. You see Devin Fontenot starting to heat up. Has not pitched yet in this thing. He's been a closer for a lot of the year for LSU. It's Devin Fontenot. Hit sharply and past the diving Broussard. Lead off single. For Slater. And the tying run comes to the plate in Matt Walner. Now Matt Walner has been quiet tonight. To me that just makes him more scary. Yeah and the question is when does Paul Maneri go? To Devin Fontenot. Looks like he's made the move. I'll tell you more about the sophomore Devin Fontenot when we come back from the box. LSU up by two. Devin Fontenot was the starter against Vanderbilt in the SEC tournament, took the loss in that game, the sophomore from the Woodlands, Texas. 26th appearance on the year for Fontenot, 5 and 2 with a 404 earned run average. What do you like from this young man? Well, the stuff's really good. I mean, look, he's up to 94 with the fastball. It's a nice sinking type action with the fastball, a nice breaking ball, too. But you saw the 21 walks. That's kind of been the issue as of late. He took over for Peterson early in the year and racked up. A few saves very fast, set at the back end of the bullpen for the first half of the season for LSU, but then kind of went into that swing roll when the SEC tournament came around and got a couple of starts in the SEC tournament. But not quite as sharp late in the year as he was early in the year. Not that he's getting hit, it's just been the control issues more than anything. Looks like Todd Peterson down in that bullpen, starting to heat up a little bit too, just in case. I know a guy quite capable of giving you six outs. That's what LSU's hunting for right now, six outs. Matt Walner is hunting a fastball that he can drive out of the park and tie it up. 57 career home runs. Well, this might be the matchup that I means this is a pretty good matchup for Walner, really. Because Fontenot typically, if he's on, he's trying to stay down and sink it. And most left handers like the ball down more so than they like it up. So not a bad matchup. My guess is Fontenot's going to try to live on the outside part of the plate with that sinking fastball. Couple home runs in this regional already for Matt Walner. 0 for 3 tonight, a pair of strikeouts. Quickly ahead on the count, 2-0 and is Walner. See Paul Maneri carpeting a little bit, home plate umpire. Doug Williams thought that was a strike. That's where Fontenot likes to live. Down low, right at the bottom of the knees. He will elevate when he gets ahead. He likes to sink it. The young man who is going to be the Sunday starter in addition to the cleanup hitter for Southern Miss. He's got a terrific arm, but then had some soreness and decided, I'm just going to focus on hitting. That's my first love anyway. You green light him here, 3-0? Heck yeah. Well, he should have it timed up. He's seen three fastballs. So it wouldn't be a shocker if he gets the green light, 3-0. Hunting a cookie right here. Ball four. Pulmonary has had to sweat out these last two games against Southern Miss. Remember, 
was LSU up 4-0. And then the bullpen with a couple of walks, a hit batter. You bring in Hess. He serves up the grand slam. You're tied at four. Now here you are. You finally retake the lead. You're up by two. And the first two on for Bryant Bowen. Yeah, Bowen's got 11 home runs, but certainly this is a bunning situation. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what Scott Berry's going to do, head coach for Southern Miss. Not showing it. Takes the pitch for a strike. Don't know how much confidence Coach Barry has in the hitters behind Bowen. My only question, you got Cole Donaldson who's starting tonight, the backup catcher. This is an eye-popping number if there ever was one. In this regional, Southern Miss with runners in scoring position, hitting 4-10. They have done it every game. The reason why they're averaging 10 and a half runs a game coming into this one here in this tournament. That was the pitch. Fastball dribbled to the right side, and there'll be a rare one unassisted. Leonard's advanced to second and third, so it serves as a sacrifice. Base hit can tie it up here. Will he stay with Donaldson? Yes. Red shirt senior. Well, Donaldson tossed his bat like he'd been intentionally walked, but I, I can't imagine <laughs> that that's going to actually happen. Well, that was odd. <laughs> Donaldson now has to go back, pick up the bat, and go back in the batter's box. And now Scott Berry wants to know what, what's going on here. Yeah, there was a, a, a communication breakdown between home plate umpire Doug Williams and head coach from LSU, Paul Maneri. Now, I, I didn't think they were going to walk him. Mean, nothing against Donaldson, but you got a 252 batter with no home runs coming to the plate. I don't know why you would walk him to load the bases. LSU's going to play the middle infield back. They're going to concede one run, try to only give up one. Worst case scenario. Donaldson cracking a smile about the whole thing. Saying, okay, if you want me to hit, I'll hit. Southern Miss has had a flurry of unsung heroes here of late, trying to find another one. And Cole Donaldson. on that fastball 94 again straight gas and past the swinging bat of Donaldson, that one at 96. With some life to it, and I mean some late life. Both of those balls start in the middle part of the plate. By the time it gets to the catcher's mid, it's kind of running a little bit up and in. Rising fastball up 95. Two on, one out. A 2-2 two -two count to Donaldson. Hunter LeBlanc on deck. You 
get the feeling if he threw Donaldson something off speed, that could just buckle him. He's seen 95, 96, 96. Having a hard time catching up to it. Like he tried a little breaking ball there, 81. I think he will like to go back to the gas here, don't you? No doubt. Yeah, because that breaking ball wasn't anywhere close. So he's going right back to the heat here. And I think if you're Donaldson, you can't be late here. You got to get your foot down. You got to get it started. If he spins a breaking ball for a strike, you just tip your hat. But you go get the heater here. There it is, and there it is. It's Donaldson to, just overmatched. Yeah, just hard to catch up. I mean, those balls are borderline strike, but they're just above the belt, and they have a little hair to them, too, at 95, 96, and this one is 95. We see that late movement, too. Hunter Lebla, the freshman. A Louisiana kid. Probably caught a few LSU games in his time as a youngster growing up outside of New Orleans. Upstairs for ball two. Yeah, and LeBlanc, just like Donaldson, you know you get the fastball here. Don't be late. Be on time. 24 runs with two outs in this regional for Southern Miss. To first. And Fontenot does the job. Two stranded for the Golden Eagles. We head to the bottom of the eighth. LSU on top, six to four. Four, six, and two for Southern Miss. Six, ten, and one for LSU. One victory away from hosting a Super Regional. They would take on Florida State. Eric Walker, not exactly one of his best starts. Josh Lewis. That line score does not do it justice. He really was the guy that kept Southern Miss around tonight, and if somehow they win it, he still gets a game ball. And Montenegro is locked in as any hitter in this regional right now. He is due to hit third in the ninth inning. First things first, LSU trying to find some insurance here in the bottom of the eighth. It's the top of the order with Josh Smith. Smith has homered, he has tripled, he's driven in three. All that damage came in the first two at-bats. And he's got Slater diving on his stomach. Quick race to the bag, he got him! And this will be reviewed. Well, I tell you what, we've seen some pretty good defensive plays by Southern Miss here the last couple of innings. So, Southern Miss is the ultimate feast or famine team defensively. They either put together a highlight reel or they boot it. It wasn't a great throw. You see right there having to go down and he steps. Yeah, well, I think great he beat it. play. Very athletic play by Jackson right there. He yes, covered the bag. Is. He got there in plenty of time. It wasn't a great feed 
from the first baseman Slater, but Nick makes it, and that's hard to do. It looks easy to do, but when you're running wide open trying to beat the runner down the line and catch a ball behind you, that is tough to do. I, I tell you what I see when I see a play like that, and I want to get your thoughts as a former pitcher. I see a, a foot or ankle injury about to happen for the pitcher that's covering. Right? Yeah, but I mean, at this point in the game, you got to sell out. I mean, if you get run over, you get run over, but you got to find a way to make it out. That's the only way you're going to win the ball game because LSU gets the leadoff guy on. Very likely to score. Good thing Jackson wears about a size 15, it looks like, because it covers that entire base. Uh, look like that big ski got on there first. The big dog bit. This should not take too long to confirm. It does not. Great play turned in by Slater and Jackson. One out here in the bottom of the eighth. Southern Miss trying to make it a two-run deficit heading into the ninth inning. Broussard 0 for 4. Broussard had his first career home run in the win over Stony Brook on Friday night. Regardless of what happens in this game, Southern Miss is going to sweep like one big collective baby tonight. It's been a long, grueling day for everybody on the Southern Miss side. That first game started at 3 o'clock Eastern. Here we are now. It's midnight Eastern time. So, Yeah, plus you get a late game last night. you got to recover quickly to right. play the day game today. This team has shown a lot of want to. Base hit up the box by Broussard. So do the math. I mean, they have been, well, they've been at the ballpark for on and off for about 12 hours just today alone. They had a quick trip to the hotel in between games. You see the same uniforms they wore in the first game. They had a chance to just get a bite to eat, hydrate, come back. Keep the energy up and hope for the best. Duplantis, they've gotten the best out of this young man for four years. 354 career hits after two today. Still has a chance to become the all-time at-bats leader in the history of the sport. And LSU goes to Omaha. He's got a shot at it. <laughs> to the right side. Oh, good range shown by Gidry, and the throw is there. Thought that one might sneak through off the bat. Fine play turned in once again by the right side of that Southern Miss infield. So two gone, a runner in scoring position, and here's Cabrera. Freshman All-American a year ago with a 315 average and 54 RBIs. Came into this regional with a 14 game on Bay Street. And a home run cut for strike one. hands 0-2 now the count on the LSU left fielder if LSU wins this regional they're going to be very thankful for that deep bullpen
Yeah, and, and winning game two of a regional is so important because you don't wear out that bullpen. If LSU would have lost game two, now they'd be kind of in the same situation Southern Miss is in because they would have had to use everybody they had to get to this point. That's why winning game two of a regional so important. You save your arms, save your bodies. And you watch the other teams come through the loser's bracket and wear out the pitcher. And of course, it, it, the strategy changes entirely in the Super Regionals. That's just a regular type series. Best two out of three, one game a day. No loser's bracket. Nobody's bullpen typically gets that burnt up in a Super Regional. Regional very often can be a battle of attrition. Boy, if it is LSU, Florida State, that one pretty much sells itself, doesn't it? <laughs> you don't have to say much more than that. There LSU, FSU, Mike Martin, come on. Good inning for Jackson. Final call for Southern Miss, and you will see their hottest hitter, Gabe Montenegro. He bats third when they come back. Last call for the Golden Eagles in this regional. They're down two in the ninth. They've been in worse spots before including the last game against Arizona State. Gabe Montenegro, the walk-off, plating two to knock out the Sun Devils and to live to play another game. Montenegro is going to bat third. Southern Miss would love to have a runner on for their hottest hitter when he does come to the plate. Again, the winner of this regional takes on Florida State. And if it's LSU, it'll be a home super for the Tigers. Lynch, Cooper, and then back to the top in Montenegro. Lynch, a two-run single in the fifth. One for three tonight. Fontenot stays on the bump for LSU. The flame-throwing right-hander. Comes inside for the fastball at 93. One ball, one strike on Lynch. Extra there at 94, and boy, you see that late run. Velocity is one thing, but when you begin to combine velocity with movement, that's when it gets awfully tough for a hitter. Haven't been many guys in this lineup that can time that fastball. Round ball to shortstop. Smith, easy money to first, one away. A pinch hitter now, Storm Cooper was the scheduled batter. He's hitting under 200 on the year. Eric Horde, we saw in the first game today, he actually had a pair of hits, including a two-run single. So back to the stocky senior from Brandon, Mississippi, with potentially the last at bat in his career. Love to just get Hoard on any way possible for Montenegro when he comes up next. But he's going to have to do so behind him at count 0 and 2. Well, Fontenot just attacking right now with above average fastball. And able to stay out of the middle of the plate, inside corner, outside corner. Swing and a miss, strike three. Gas upon gas. Yeah, he elevated that one too. You saw Saul Garza, 0-2 count. Didn't want to throw it in the zone, so Garza gets all the way out to the outside corner in 95. Kind of elevated just off the outside corner. 
And the final hope for Southern Miss comes in the form of Gabe Montenegro, who's got seven hits in the two games today. He's also walked in this game. He's homered in this game. Getting a little words of encouragement from head coach Scott Berry. Yeah, I like this move by Coach Berry here. I think more than anything is to get Fontenot out of his rhythm yeah. just a tick. As Fontenot was absolutely locked in starting the ninth inning here. How much did that bother you as a pitcher? Not a whole lot. I mean, some guys it bothers, but I mean, it's a good move. Maybe just try to get him out of the rhythm just a tick. Maybe he makes a mistake or two, walks about it, because that's what some of this needs, a couple of base runners. He's going to get that one, though. It's tough. That ball looked like it was just off the outside corner. Now, he is dotting the corners left and right at 95. Tough challenge here for Montenegro. Yeah, it's almost like he's abandoned the breaking ball. We hadn't seen one in a while. We're not going to see one there. I mean, look, that's just, that is just pepper right on the outside part. If you ever want to see if a pitcher's locked in or not, watch the catcher. Watch where the catcher sets up and watch where the ball is delivered. Right now, Fontenot is as locked in as he's been. <laughs> this place is about to explode. 10,000 fans on their feet at the box. Two years ago, they advanced to Omaha. Last year, they had to go on the road. They lost the regional. Now they got a chance to be at home for the Supers. Now you didn't think Montenegro was going to make it easy. Overcooked that one a bit. I think Bob Euchre best put that many years ago. Just a bit outside. Just a bit huh? outside. Channeling your inner Harry Doyle. the arm pad right off and Montenegro is hot and now the tying run comes to the plate yeah he better be glad he had that arm pad on because oh. he'd still be hopping around I mean right off that arm pad That might have hit him square on the elbow without the pad. Watson Hecker just making sure everything's okay. Yeah, I still got feeling. It, it, it's still bending. He can laugh about it now. <laughs> Tell you what, this Southern Miss team has been a lot of fun to watch regardless of what happens here. Montenegro, Walner. Got to love their head coach, Scott Barry. Quick conversation, Paul Maneri with Fontenot here. And guess who's at the plate? The guy that tied it up with a grand slam against LSU last night, Matthew Guidry. Yeah, well, I know what LSU's not going to throw him. That's a breaking ball down and in. Because he hit a ball off of Zach Hess for a grand slam on one swing last night. I'll tell you what, it was even borderline being the strike on an 0-2 count. I think if he beats LSU, he's going to beat him with a fastball. Now all of 
of a sudden Fontenot looking human again. Played outside. Gidry with Slater on deck. In the hole is Matt Walner. This is what Matthew Gidry did down for nothing last night off one knee against Hess a granny to tie it at four Yeah, you won't see a better move to get to a ball. that's not even a strike to what Matthew Gidry did last night And he had a similar swing in this game on a changeup from Eric Walker kind of down and in and he just missed It was a high fly ball to right field, but he went down to one knee Montenegro at first. Get read the tying run at the plate. And a 2 1. Upstairs, ball three. Slater has reached the last two times he's been at the plate a walk and a single. Once again, Southern Miss is down to its final strike. LSU had to make some noise in the SEC tournament just to play at home for the regionals. Thanks to Florida State, they now are one strike away for playing at home in the Super Regionals. Huge advantage for LSU and they can play right here at the friendly confines. Another payoff. Boy, this is just, this is good stuff. This is just my best against your best. We hadn't seen Fontenot spin a breaking ball the entire I, inning. It's just all fastballs, and why not? I think he threw one last inning or two innings yeah. ago. And, and it wasn't very wasn't good. wasn't very close. So he kind of put it in his back pocket. Said, you know what? If I'm going to get beat, I'm going to get beat with my best. And his best has been 93 up to 96. With some runs, some sink to it. Eighth pitch of the at bat. <laughs> we'll see a ninth. These guys, they just grind out at bats. This is where you can get frustrated as a pitcher and you want to throw that breaking ball. But in this situation, I wouldn't do it. Not a chance. Because Gidry's showing you he's not really called up to the fastball right. yet. I mean, he's not showing you he's jerking it foul. And you take a chance of spinning that one in there kind of down and in where he hit it for a homer last night. Up the middle. Smith 
Yeah. LSU will keep it on the bayou. Another trip to the Supers. Oh, you feel for that bunch right there. I mean, Southern Miss just played their guts out the last 10 days in their conference tournament to get here, get to this point. You come through the loser's bracket, but just ran out of gas. What an effort by Scott Berry's bunch. And congratulations to LSU. Devin Fonto, the last six outs he gets to pick up the save. Can't say enough about the job Scott Berry and his squad did, not just today, but throughout this regional. But in the end, it was pretty clear who the most talented team was and who the best team was. A lot of people anticipated a matchup with Arizona State. I don't think Arizona State would have had enough pitching, quite frankly, to make this a great challenge for LSU. LSU has hit its stride at the right point of the season. Been up and down. But where they are now is as good as they've been all year long. And they get to play at home as Florida State has upset Georgia in the Athens Regional. So LSU can sleep in their beds for a few more nights and get ready to play back at the box 